Scarlet Witch, issue number two. In all of my life, I never thought I would sit here and tell you that a Scarlet Witch solo series is the book I look forward to every week the most. I didn't think it would happen. Never a Wanda fan. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I don't know, but you all seem to really like the first issue. The numbers were good. I was always going to come back for issue two, but now I'm like, this series is... I don't want to say genius, but some of the best housekeeping I have seen for a Marvel character in a long time. Wanda has one of the messiest and most complicated histories out of any comic book character in the big two. Seeing the dedication put to paper of being like, hey, you know, it's not hard to mess her up. We just have to make her have her own story and deal with shit. I'm like, you're right, we do. So that's what we're doing. And then there's a backup in this issue, and I'm like, wow, are we doing backups at Marvel now? What are we doing here? Because I just read Moon Knight, and they had a backup. Crazy. Speaking of Moon Knight, this this series reminds me so much of Jed McKay's Moon Knight, a book that if you're not reading, I highly recommend it, because it's the same vibes, except on a street level. This is a magical, ethereal level, but if you want this exact book, Moon Knight's doing it too. And that's awesome. Isn't that awesome? I love it. So the end of issue one Viv Vision came to show up because she was having some issues to deal with and she wanted to talk to her not really mama about it and again I guess we'll re we'll talk about it a little bit here like the Vision book from Tom King where you know Vision created a son and a daughter and a wife and he used the brain patterns of Wanda to make the wife so there's some similarity there, but Viv's taking everything very seriously. She doesn't want to acknowledge Wanda as a counterpart or prototype or anything connected to her mother. She's her own individual entity, which is a good theme to explore when you have an android character. I dig that a lot. I also really like the outfit that Viv is wearing. It's overly designed and complicated, but it works and it's true to her character and her colors. I do like that. But as she's dealing with her own grief, and we kind of like reiterated again, like, hey, maybe you should read those vision books and they'll tell you something about her father and her mother and her brother, which I won't spoil for everybody. But there are certain events that happen with two of those characters in particular where they don't really appear after that. It's a really good book. Highly recommend checking that out. But Viv has pretty much been doing okay, but suddenly... Dreams have begun in her mind when she shuts down. It feels like a code is attacking her, implementing some sort of thing. She can't really figure out what it is or know what's happening to her. But these nightmares aren't stopping. And if they don't stop, it's going to consume her code and kill her. So she wants Wanda's help in figuring out how that could be. It feels like it's chained to the worst moments of my life and I can never escape them. And hey, speaking of getting chained to the worst moments of your life... That's the character of Wanda Maximoff. So, of course, she's going to help her not-daughter figure this out. Why wouldn't she? So, Wanda uses a spell. They enter into Viv's dreams. And we're going to go solve the case. That's it, folks. We're going into the mind. And I love it. Artwork is great. But Shelly's so good here. I don't know who's doing the colors, but it'll be up in the video so you can see it. The colors are so good. There's something so unique and powerful about the colors of this book. It's so vibrant. So many good uses of pink and green in particular, especially when we have Viv in the book. But we go inside Viv's mind and we see like this metropolis bustling city with circuits and these characters with like plugins and stuff. And Viv's like on the head of every building and oh, it looks gorgeous and it's amazing. And you just listen to Wanda like, well nobody can say your father wasn't creative you know like look what he can build in here so she's now wearing her really cool new scarlet witch costume is it the best scarlet witch costume conversation we'll have to have another day because it might be but she's walking around she finds the the childhood home of viv i say childhood loosely because she's still kind of like a new entity but you kind of get that it's the home she grew up in but she walks inside and she finds that there's somebody waiting for her there Who's waiting for Wanda when she walks inside the house? Oh, it's Dream Queen, daughter of Nightmare. And I just, I said it last issue. I want to say it again. And I, I don't know if I'm leaning hard into something, but there's just like this really strong queer message being pushed across in this book. Just looking at Dream Queen, 
wearing that outfit with the big horns, the revealing clothes, holding a whip. And then later on, when we actually listen to Wanda, like, talk to her and have conversation with her, it is just so sassy and kind of, like, hot in a weird way. And there's just this, like, weird idea of, like, identity and, like, self-identification in this book. And, like, how does Viv see herself? How does Viv see her mother? How does Wanda see herself in comparison to these other people? There is some queer allegory in here, and I think it's very powerful. But you look at Dream Queen, you're instantly in love with her. And she just starts to toy with Wanda a little bit. So she morphs into the Vision, spits tears in her mouth because, remember, Vision can cry. <laughs> and you're like, okay, Steve Orlando, man, you got me hooked. I I'm digging this. So it's just a big old fight in the mindscape and nothing wrong with that. Y you dig it, right? Everyone's just trying to tell Wanda, like, you're so hung up on the past. That's all we think about when we see you is your past mistakes. And she's like, I have grown from them. You are all terrible. And this is what I'm saying about the dialogue with Wanda. You know, we see that Scream Queen's attacking. Now it's Dream Queen. Ah, see, I'm just... You put Dream and Queen in a word, and how am I not supposed to think certain things, you know? It's great. But Wanda takes her whip. She goes, you sure, Queen? It's not my first time in the lion's den. And just whips her with the whip. And I'm like, the, what are we doing? Why is this so cool? Is it the artwork? Is it the designs for each character? Having some of the best costumes I've ever seen. Is it the posing where everyone just looks like they're like bending their knees? I don't I don't know why. It's just all good. Every single frame of this is awesome. And you're like, okay, Wanda, that, that's enough. I'm done playing with you. Ah, how are you supposed to save Viv if you can't even save yourself? And she and you see that Dream Queen thinks she kills Wanda, because it's that easy. It's like, no, I'm better than you, baby. Come on. I'm the Scarlet Witch. You're nothing to me. You're nothing. I, I can do anything. I'm great. You want to come with the Scarlet Witch? You better not miss. So Wanda traps her in a bubble. Right? She's in a bubble. And she's like, all right. You want to feed on Viv because it's an android and you can feed on her fears forever. Forever having like some power coming into you. Here. Here's something you could chew on. So Wanda makes like this weird little... It, was, it looks like a joint a bit, but it's a piece of food that she gives to Dream Queen. And what that is, it's like a, I don't know, it's a, some weird food, Somali, is that what she calls it? So when she eats it, it's gonna give her so much pain because it's all of Wanda's bad times. Like the worst moment of Wanda's life is now the essence of this piece of food that a Dream Queen can eat. And then she just lets her go of it. It's like, well, I guess we'll see if that's satisfactory. I'm like, that's a creative way to end it. Because it, one, clears up some issues with Wanda. Now she can let go of that moment. And Dream Queen can feed on some weird memory from Wanda. Okay. That's cool. <laughs> it is cool. I do like it. So it looks like everything's better. The house is doing a little bit better. It's like not disheveled and broken anymore. And Viv shows up. It's like, sure, she's gone. I'm going to be okay. How did you defeat her? And Wanda, of course, is like, with a lie. I told her she was going to be feeding on my worst moment, my pain and my suffering. But there was a catch. When she eats it, she'll taste my pain. And when she devours it, she's going to change and then she'll need to feed on bliss. So when she eats it, she'll have to have bliss to survive. If she ever wants to survive, she's going to have to feed on good, good dreams. Okay. I didn't know it was that easy. But again, it's magic. There are no rules. Just do whatever you want and we'll all be on board for it. That's really cool. That's awesome. What a good use of Wanda's powers, of Viv Vision of Dream Queen and such cool energy. I dig it so much. Bring back Dream Queen, please. That design is perfect. I'm in love with it. I love it. I don't know why I like this book so much. So we return to the real world. Viv is feeling a lot better. She is proud that Wanda was able to help her. She has no signs of the Dream Queen in her code. She's feeling a lot better. Not to the point where she's going to call Wanda family, but... She does feel better knowing that this woman who has intrinsic connection to her family is in her corner to help her, which is really nice. So she just leaves and I'm like, okay, not too shabby, not too shabby. I like that. And we just kind of end the book on a nice little note. We just see, you know, you know, I was going to say Kat Dennings, but that's not the name of the character. It's Darcy Lewis. She's just cleaning up some residue 
and we have this a couple of quieter moments of people coming to the shop and we just see like an old man comes in so he'll have a memory of his wife people trying to sell certain stones to wanda not really interested and the day that darcy comes back she's like hey that's good everything's kind of fun she's like you tell me what uh what what led you to my last door darcy she's like nah i don't i don't want to talk about it not yet no yeah we're not we're not doing the darcy thing just yet but we do get some glimpses of what that might be so we cut to the bar of no name in west new york new jersey we see some people getting the shit kicked out of them lesser lesser known characters and this person in high heels and a chain is standing and it's like hey beating up these villains like perhaps i was unclear darcy lewis owes blood to the bond the bache and any who aid in sheltering her will answer to Sith Scythia? Scythia? Is that a character? I don't know. All I know is you're showing things I like. High heels, green boots, and a big old chain. That's where that book ends. And daddy's happy. But there's a backup. And it's just kind of, I guess, teeing up something coming up recently, which is Scarlet Witch kind of connecting back with the world of Krakoa. It's just her kind of teaming up with Storm on a mission to bring balance there. This, I guess kind of like reinstating their relationship. The stuff happening since Trial of Magneto. And what's going on of him. And they go to like the moon and fight. It's not the moon. Mars, right? Like Araco. I'm not reading the X-Men stuff. So that's kind of fun. Nice little backup. And it's just cool, man. Like this is fun. This, this was fun. I had a great time. The artwork is so beautiful. The story is unique. When you care about Wanda, and it's so weird to me that just like the Moon Knight book that I adore, this book solely exists because these characters are suddenly popular in the larger pop culture, that we can have one of the best iterations of the character solely because there was a mandate to make this book. That is amazing. I guess we should do more of that, <laughs> you know, because they're two for two in my opinion, and that's impressive. This book was strong. This book was fantastic. I am going to recommend everybody check it out. There is something so creative and unique about it. And the artwork is beautiful. And the costumes, not just the costumes, but the clothes the characters are wearing is so perfect. It is a sassy little book that I adore. Awesome. So Scarlet Witch issue number two, I am going to give a nine out of ten. Now, thank you guys for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Hive, and I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.